We'll be done for. <laughs> what, what's the? Uh, there's no. There's. We're anything. live. We'll, we'll, we're live. we'll officially we're roll. Doing it live. All we're right. doing it live. Oh, wait, we're no, we're, we missed all that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just we get like super awkward. We're like, uh, so how are you um, feeling, Jack? How's tennis <laughs> going for you? <laughs> now the camera's rolling. Everyone's just like, <laughs> hey, Jack, why don't you tell us who's who people are hearing on the mic right now in episode one, our first official guest? Is this the first episode? Yeah. It's like no first camera. guest. I feel like every camera's facing that way. Wow. You're, uh, so this is your yeah. camera right here. Okay, what's up? Um, uh, what's up, everyone? Uh, Jack Saki, we're back uh, with Smashing Rackets. Uh, we have an awesome, awesome dude on today. Um, you know him <laughs> as the Vashik Pospisil. Um, you may know us a little bit as Pop Sock. Uh, we had a dream run there for a couple of years, 2014, 2015. Um, virtually unstoppable, some would say. Um, but yeah, we, we, uh, we had some amazing memories together. He's obviously a uh, staple in tennis. He's uh, on and off the court um, doing incredible things. So here's really Vashik. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, really nice. of course. Yeah. Of course. I'm glad to be here. Honestly, this is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm honored. It's the first episode. Yeah, absolutely. Which is... Well, we had one before, I, but you're the first yeah. guest. Yeah. You're the okay, first I'm guest. the first guest. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, the inaugural. I have so many questions for you. Wait, we got to introduce the other yeah. two here. What, yeah, what? yeah. The, the listeners know. It's kind know. of important, too. J.P. Hovey. Clark Cummings. Newest one into tennis. I didn't get into it until like 2019. I was working at IMG Academy. Actually met Dennis and started working with him a little bit. Shapovalov. Oh, really? So that's how I got into it. I've heard a lot about you. Heard yeah. you got a, a good, good night. a lot of shit. Good night's sleep last night. <laughs> they talk a lot of shit. No, no, no. Dennis? <laughs> Apparently y'all are boys, no? Yeah, we're boys, yeah. <laughs> we are. No, Maybe we not. are. I actually, yeah. no, no, I, no, of course. We're actually super tight. The whole Davis Cup team, uh, I was just kidding, obviously. I, didn't, I wasn't, wouldn't expect him to talk shit, but I was just <laughs> probing. Um, no, we're, we're pretty tight. Like, everyone on the Davis Cup team is, is um, well, the Canadians are pretty tight. Champs so, last champs, year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Champs. reigning champs. Yeah. 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 There, was, uh, there was a lot of buzz around uh, the, the uh, Team USA Selection. Oh, oh! I remember that. that was, yeah, everyone was talking oh, last about year? it. Everyone was talking about it. At the end, yeah. of, at the, for the finals last yeah. year. Yeah. Who was yeah. the captain the last year for the Marty. U.S.? And <coughs> the controversy was selecting Rajiv Ram. Yeah, that was well, th- it was yeah, it was or not selected. Yeah, it was not. Yeah. I guess yeah. it was not. Selected oh, he didn't get selected. Finals. It was. Um, I mean, you guys had a great team. I mean, you have four. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I stand by our our captain and our picks and. Think any, if you look at any tennis results right now, and you have Taylor Fritz, Francis Tiafo, and Tommy Paul on the team, the way they're playing, yeah. mm-hmm. um, I back myself on the doubles court. You know, I thought we had a good chance of of doing some damage, and we ran into a, a red hot uh, Italian team to start out, and it was yeah, I mean, tough loss. But <laughs> I have a question for for you guys. With obviously Davis Cup has changed a lot over the last two to three years with what they're doing. Do you guys prefer this format or the format previously, I guess, what, last was three, four years ago? Who's going first here? Uh, well, you're a champ. Well, you yeah. Go, I probably prefer this World one. champion. I would say, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I, um, I probably preferred the last one because of those home ties where the, yeah. you just fill up the whole the stadium and, like, the atmosphere is... is you know, nuts. Um, so that took a bit of a hit, and I guess, um, but I get it. Like, you know, I, the concept, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. They're trying to replicate, you know, the World Cup yeah. in soccer and do the same thing in tennis. And, I mean, you know, it takes a bit of time to build out and get get momentum like anything, right? If you start something from from scratch, let's say it's like you, you got to, um, but I do prefer the old, the old um, format. Be honest, but yeah. Jack doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He's playing pickleball. No, no. <laughs> I think uh, there, there, I'm, I'm low key jealous. The thing is, there I'm like, I, I I talk a lot of shit. I'm like, oh yeah, there you go. But I'm like low key super jealous because I'm like so jaded from the tennis tour. Has anybody reached out uh, to you, pickleball? No, no, no. Um, they have not. I feel like I I, I think I had the conversation with um one of the agents that. He's actually helping me as, as well, not like you know exclusively, but but about I think it was like maybe a year ago or something. He he had a conversation with me like kind of like oh because he does he's done a lot of the deals. You know, I don't know if you Josh, but but um, and I'm yeah I didn't at the, at the time and still currently didn't have interest. But you know we'll see how the body holds up. Um, 
the next uh, year or so. And I mean, it's, I feel like if you're going to go, you got to be one of the early ones. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. So, so I think there's still, I think there's still about a year to capitalize on it. That'd be my guess. No, what do you think? Um, obviously I, I don't know for sure. I think, um, and it's not even it's not even capitalizing for me i guess it's I just, yeah i'm just uh, we we've, we've both been doing this a long time on the tennis tour um i've had numerous injuries like Vashik. um we've both had you know our our issues with the body and um yeah for me it's just with the baby on the way and and uh this next chapter yeah i just i i couldn't see myself traveling 30 plus weeks a year anymore um especially with <clears throat> having to go you know work try to get my ranking back up and all that so um it was almost just a i felt like it felt like a godsend that pickleball came around i was able to you know go it's it's pure joy for me to go out there and play and obviously the the hype and buzz around it right now it was uh, made you know made it easier to to one you know kind of move over to that and and uh and be able to be home way more mm-hmm. and you know kind of be a be a real dad and not be traveling on the road. I, I, I could have never done that. Yeah. Back to Davis Cup real quick. <laughs> After y'all won, were the boys buzzing? Did the boys go crazy? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, well, that's the thing. Tennis is, is uh, I mean, it kind of puts you through the ringer. I mean, I'm just going to go back to, to Jack's point. It's like, you know, as you kind of get older and you've been doing it for so many years, like, you get burned out. Because it's 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 pretty savage, like mentally and physically, so demanding. And I think like that's why I, I wouldn't be surprised, especially now because pickleball is also it's also paying pretty well. I mean, I mean from what I'm hearing, you know, they're they're these these guys are are going to the pickleball circuit for for you know to get paid too, right? So yeah. I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if more more you know players start start going there like the older older guys like you know over 30 that that are just burned out from the tour and now they have another option I really hope because not. you know <laughs> Basta, I see I you I see you switching in like two years I I honestly I I don't know I've never played I I've see you play played pickleball I, would, I still haven't played you don't yeah. say that you're just supposed, so supposed to say you play all the time and you get a better yeah no, no, no that's true that's true Fuck it. no I'm just kidding I actually low, low key and playing every day in preparation because I want to come out and be like holy shit this guy's never played and just like first week like just crush it, uh, <laughs> which is probably what I'll end up doing. I'll be like, just like build a pickleball court in my like fucking basement, like I can dig it, like just like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, I would do it. I would do it. Just too early, not yet, you know. So we want to announce it on this podcast officially when you're when you make we'll, the switch. We'll, we'll play dubs. Pop sock on the pickle court would be Dibs. pretty nasty. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to. I don't want to get into anything here, but like we just dominate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we dominate. I know that's my only that, that I've had. I mean, the other day when I was at the courts, it was every single person. It feels like uh, I'm just I'm fully associated with pickleball now for some reason, and or not for some reason, I guess. But um, yeah, every I feel like every tennis player came up and was like, "Oh, you, you know, you think we tennis players we just come over and play? It'd be easy." Like, and I was like, "I think there's a big." misconception uh and uh i think they they are underrating the top pickleball players like yeah. if you haven't played that much and you have you know you have a skill set obviously with a racket eye hand coordination you have a paddle in your hand if you have good hands in tennis obviously it'll translate as well, well but you will get absolutely embarrassed by the good players. Not not saying you're well, you saying tennis. Have, no, I'm not saying yeah, you're saying you tennis to, players I mean, listen, in general listen, for sure. To, there's a learning curve. No, like, no, it's just obviously because it's yeah. you know, like a racket. You're not gonna go and like beat the world number one pickleball player that like. No, no. But I'm I mean, saying, I think if you if if the tennis players and and to your point, like I think you still need to have you know, like you're not you can't just go on the baseline and like grind like right. some guys. If you don't, if you know you don't have to have yeah. the good hands, you have to have quick hands like volleys, yes. but like 100%. you have those elements in your tennis game and then you commit right i mean no, it, it, you're I'm, already one of the top guys right i mean how long have you been playing for i mean not that long i mean i i started i started playing more in general probably probably about a year ago but like i but i play all the time yeah. and like i legit like go practice and but what, what are you what would you what would you say you are right now in terms of like if you 
<laughs> no, no, just like, and don't be modest. Just be like, oh, be, be objective. Don't be like, yeah, I'm like fucking number two in the world. Or, yeah, I'm done the best. Or maybe you are. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, like objectively, tell me how good are you right now? Like, I, don't, I genuinely don't know. I don't watch it. I've seen it, some videos. I've never played it. I have no idea. Yeah. Just obviously signed a big thing. Like, you know. I think it's, I, I think it's tough for Pickle because it's, it, it can get tricky on your on your level and how good you are because it can be fairly partner based. I think at times, like I actually think Query is much better than the you know the rap he gets. And uh, but I, but he's played with people that sorry are just not that good. Like in that in that you know at that level. Um, oh yeah. And I'm like it it's that. like you know the number one guy plays with the number one girl and they just rake every week. Yeah. Right? Like they're never losing, but. You then, and then when they've gone to play MLP, which is the team, you know, version of pickleball, um, they, you know, they get partnered with random people because they draft a team and they're not, you know, they're not winning as much. And I think that obviously shows that a lot of the best players will team up together and they just kind of dominate every weekend. So it is fairly partner based. Um, so in that sense, like, uh, you know, if I if I have a very good partner as well and we're playing like. I played with Anna Lee in Charlotte. We won the tournament. If I play with, you know, the number 10 girl, you know, maybe we aren't winning the tournament, you know, but so it is fairly partner based, but I would say I'm a top, I would say I'm a top five guy right now mm. in, in pickleball um, all around. Cause then there's also singles, doubles mixed, like yeah. some guys that really just play singles, which is insane. I don't know why singles is very, very underestimated on how actually physical, actually tough that is at times singles pickleball at a high level is, is very difficult. Um, and then yes, some guys are just, you know, doubles and mixed and so I, it's tough to, tough to kind of evaluate, but yeah, say I'm up there. Is it, this is kind of a double sided question just around this week and the last two weeks here. And it's different because you're still playing tennis and, and you're going to pick a ball too. Uh, some respect out there. Right now, yeah. about to make but a run. It feels oh, like coming to this, this U S open this year that they're starting to promote the game of pickleball a lot. Like you have, Alcaraz, Rublev, Rune, all these guys just did a major event. They they brought them to some event, I think, a few days ago. Does that, I mean, does that annoy you, like, that they're using these top players to kind of promote the game of pickleball for you personally, Vasek? But then I guess it's good for you, Jack, because they're trying to promote the game. But it's, I feel like it's weird. You know, you're at the U.S. Open. It's not the U.S. Open of pickleball. It's the U.S. Open of tennis. Like, yeah, I mean, no, it doesn't doesn't bother me, but but I, I mean, I don't think it makes any sense. It doesn't make why. any sense. I mean, yeah, if you're, especially if you know p they're looking at pickleball as a potential competitor to yeah. tennis, which I mean, I I, I mean, I, I have my opinions on on that, which we can we can talk about. I don't think it's gonna get anywhere near um, tennis and and you know. Because I feel like it's it's probably super fun to play, and I yeah. think that's why it it you know has been blowing up. Because um, the older generation, they can all play, but it's not really that fun to watch. Like I mean, I I tried watching some of it, and it's just like it wasn't very entertaining. So I, I anyway, I, I don't know why they would do that. To be honest, like why Alcaraz and these guys would be playing pickleball, like Jack Smiley. Know, you must like, not have watched a Jack Smiley like, match. Maybe you love watching it. I that, well, I mean, as a, I mean, I, I, I just, I just like, I, yeah, I, I completely you know, understand. I understand. Yeah. I don't you know, want to throw too much shade on pickleball. Like, I'm not here to be like, this is not the anti pickleball episode. Of, of <laughs> but they shouldn't be like, using these players. First and last time this guy comes on. Smash it. your racket, <laughs> pickleball racket. Like, what happened? That's a great like, question. Yeah, you snap that thing for sure. You know, but. Like, um, I don't know. I, I, I especially if I'm going to get drafted in two years. <laughs> like, really, like they're going to this. This is going to haunt me. <laughs> going to be like, we're not bringing this guy. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I get that. Obviously, you're here playing. Yeah, playing a grand slam of tennis. I understand why people wouldn't wouldn't want to see that. Uh, maybe you know being played here, especially with, yeah with the top players. Um, but yeah, like like Vashik said, obviously tennis is um, has been. Um, established for so long now, and pickleball is just, you know, it's just starting. Um, you can't even, you couldn't call it even a competition yet in that sense. Um, I do think, 
Yeah, I think I think different. Yeah, different. You know, different people have you know different views on whether they like watching or not. I completely understand how you go watch and people are dinking a bunch, and it's not. It maybe doesn't seem that exciting or that interesting as, you know, someone who loves to play and 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 trying to get better and all that. Obviously, I I enjoy even watching just trying to you know learn stuff and and get better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I think I think there's so many pickle people out there now like the you know uh that do enjoy watching so i because i've you know i've seen some of the the tv ratings and even like their Are youtube good? ratings yeah, yeah ratings? i mean they're really? they they i mean they do well for okay for I, might, what I might be totally wrong i, <laughs> well, I mean yeah for yeah for for yeah for what it's i mean they yeah, yeah i mean yeah i mean they, they do well they have you know tv deals for next year already yeah. in place and um and money's coming in yeah i play a little bit yeah. Not too much. My mom plays every day. Did you play tennis too? No. I didn't. Dude, I legit didn't get into it until right. like 2019. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's on TV. It's on ESPN at 9 a.m. in the morning. Really? Saturday and Sunday. Like How many a few times weeks you ago, we were in ESPN? Vegas. Doesn't anyone sleep through 9 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> dude, that's, <laughs> dude, that's what's nuts. Is like I was, I was telling people, like, we played the Charlotte. I played the Annalee. Our, our final was on ESPN2. Yeah, on like wow. a, on a weekend night, and that's crazy. I was like, I try to think back. I think, well, I mean, that I was, no, that's crazy. I was like, if you if you want to make ESPN in tennis, you have to make like the quarters are better of singles in a slam. I right? like maybe round of sixteen. How about ESPN two though? I mean, <laughs> probably the same. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. Maybe fourth round, uh, but I, it's just crazy. I think I think the user friendly side of pickleball for people from of all ages and everything you can you know. It's obviously going to be easier to pick up and, and try to get better at yes if you don't start tennis at an early age or put you know an insane amount of hours in obviously there's no hope really for you so yeah um the user-friendly side of it makes it more appealing for sure but i mean i guess we'll see what happens yeah between y'all two there's obviously some chemistry going on there's fireworks there's fireworks oh, yeah. <laughs> what how, sparks. how did y'all get linked up in the in the doubles game and then after that, why'd y'all break up? I well, I can I can. I mean, I'll tell the story of how we we um, from 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 my perspective, at least what was going on in in, in my you think he was cute at the time. Um, yeah, he did, but, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually injured at the time. Um, I was top thirty in singles. Uh, you know, playing great tennis i mean those years i was obviously um you know were the the best years of, of my career single on, on the singles court and and i was supposed to play doubles with julian Knoll, and i was i had back issues for like five five months six months leading into wimbledon and i and basically i was not playing you know most events i'd pull out or i'd play one and then i'd pull out for three weeks and whatever and then and I told him, I told Julian, I was like, hey, the deadline was coming up. And I was like, hey, man, like, I'm probably not going to be able to play. Just so you know, like, we can sign it, we can sign up and, you know, you can take a chance. But I'm giving you the heads up. If you want to find another partner and be sure that you'll be able to play, then, like, like please do, you know, or up, just up to you. And uh, he was like, okay, yeah. He's like, thanks for telling me. He found another partner. And then, so I just was chilling and I was just, and then I think it was probably like a, I want to. I want to say it was maybe a day or two before the deadline. I don't know. Yeah, Jack. It was, it was close. Jack uh, messaged me because I didn't make an effort to find a partner because I was like, well, there's no point. DM. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember. It was a text. Or whatever. But <laughs> but uh, WhatsApp. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's up? Instagram wasn't a thing then. I think it or it was just starting. I didn't right. even have an account because I know I made my first account. After we won, yes, right. <laughs> I mean, our, our, my first account, still my only account. But, uh, um, and so he messaged me because he was around a hundred in singles at the yeah. time, and um, obviously he was, you know, coming up, and and I didn't really know him that well, or you know, just, we practiced once at Delray Beach, that's the only thing I remember. And uh, so he he asked me, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to play doubles?" And I was like, "I was like, I'm." pretty damn injured like I don't think I'm gonna be able to play and I told him the same thing and he's like oh, he's like oh whatever let's just sign like I he needed somebody higher rank to get in to make the cut and he's like well, let's just let's just sign I was like okay let's just sign and see what happens and then um and then we both lost first round singles and uh we had uh 
we had a tournament that we were both playing in Newport after Wimbledon, and we wanted to have a bit of a vacation too. Like this sounds this sounds bad, but this is the truth. I mean, this is the truth from my perspective. I mean, I'm gonna let you talk about it, but <laughs> but I wasn't playing doubles. I mean, I was focused on singles, I, and I, like that was my main focus. And so when we lost singles, like also wanted to have a bit of a break and like a vacation because then we got Newport and more events. So we took it pretty chill. I mean, the first the first couple the first week, I mean, we didn't practice. Like, I think we, came, we hit for like thir- like okay, we hit for like 20, 30 minutes, and then like like you know we we're going out. Like we went out. I wanted to have a break because I was on the road for so long too. So, um, and we started winning. And we st- still didn't take it seriously until until <laughs> I mean, I say, it no, got serious sounds, later on. That's no, it sure. sounds bad, but it's it's the truth. Like I wouldn't like yeah. we weren't until until we made the quarters. Like obviously we get on the court and we're we're competitive and I mean we were playing lights out from basically from the first match. Um, probably because we didn't really like you know care that much at the time. And then we made the quarterfinals. And, and we're like, we're like, we're like, fuck, man, we should we should probably stop going out. Like, let's let's like let's win this tournament. And, then, and so I remember we had that conversation. We're like, yeah, like let's let's do it. Let's, let's win the tournament. Like, yeah, like this is like from quarterfinals. So then we stopped going out. We stopped our little vacation, and then yeah, again, the rest is history. We, yeah. we took it down. We stressed ourselves out a little. <laughs> yeah. on the court, we started going to bed at eight o'clock, and oh yeah, wake was, up and yeah. No, we uh, yeah. I mean, that's exactly. I was I was. Uh, I was yeah I'm trying to work my way up the rankings to start kind of my career uh, a few years in and and I think I kind of just went down the list because obviously you have to make as combined team you have to get inside the whatever the ranking cutoff will be and um, yeah we knew each other to a degree but not not all that well and um, I knew his hands were were money had a, a great serve lights up returns. Um, but yeah, I think I think that was that was pretty much it. I feel like we honestly had so much fun, like on and off the court. We were just kind of just hanging out and vibing, and and on the court we were playing so relaxed, and probably why we produced some some awesome tennis. And yeah, then we got we got later in towards the second week. We we're like, all right, so let's like yeah, let's try to win this. <laughs> let's try to win the title, <laughs> man. And uh, we yeah we played some some sick tennis, um, beat some good teams along the way. I mean, our draw was not was not easy by any means. I feel yeah. like I uh, played a lot of good teams. Um, was super happy we beat Pays and Stepanik and yeah. whatever around, was that the semis or quarters? That was the semis, yeah. Yeah, semis, yeah. yeah. Um, Leander was trying to hit me from the first point and. I have a funny story with Leander. <laughs> um, I don't want to, sorry, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna yeah. take this roof. Uh, actually, I don't even know Keep if going. I can say this story. <laughs> I can't you can say, say it, it. We, no. can all, we can always cut it. No, I can't say it. Go ahead, say. It. I can't say it because uh, <laughs> the uh, tennis integrity unit will come after me. <laughs> yeah, they're they're looking for any honest. They're looking for any reason to take me down right now at this point. PTPA. Uh, really? I'm on. I'm on the crosshairs. They're, they're the most wanted list. <laughs> last four years, it's been exhausting being on the tour. It's like. So how, how come they're coming after you so hard? Well, they're coming after me because, um, and this is not the tennis terror unit, to be clear, this is the, the uh, you know, the tennis tour, let's just keep it safe, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Um, well, because I guess Novak and I, we started the, the first player association and, and um, we're trying, you know, to replicate what other sports have, which is, you know, the athletes to have the ability to collectively bargain and have proper professional representation in the sport, which tennis players don't have. I mean, it's structure is mess, it's awful, terrible. And they and they try and they pretend like it. Oh no, you guys have you see the table. This is total bullshit, total bullshit. Anyway, so so uh, yeah. I mean, I guess when we started this, it's just you know tennis is a monopoly. It's it's. Um, they have full control and they're, you know, they don't want to lose that. Right. Control. And, um, that's so target on your back. Now. Yeah. I've had a target for a while. It's better now because there's, I'm, I have like, there's more people involved with this association. I mean, we have 12 full time employees now. And I mean, now we have over 300 players signed on. I mean, but the early, early years, it was like, I'd be walking around literally getting like looks from 
everyone in the industry, like right. on the tournament side. Um, I mean, especially, you know, not everybody, like there's, there's good people and we have, there's, you know, closet supporters that are like, Hey, like, you know, the players are really getting screwed. Like we see it from the other side, like what you're doing is really good. Like, so that, that kind of stuff is really nice cause you keep it going. But, but it's, it was exhausting. Like I, uh, for a couple of years there, I think it took a lot of, a lot out of my, uh, out of my career the last, uh, three, four years for sure. Just the mental component and stress and just how, you know, kind of burning you out of it. Cause tennis is tough as it is, you know, it's so tough. I mean, you're traveling all year, you know, your baseline level of stress, which you just kind of get used to because it's your life is like, is high because you're, you're one, it's a one-on-one -on -one competition. You know, you're, you're, this is not like golf where it's an individual sport, but like, you're really just playing the course. I mean, I saw that you're not playing head, you know, head to head. It's, it's stress and it's all year. It's not like, um, saw the, 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 uh, golf, um, there was a scene in the Netflix, the golf, I forget what it's called. Full swing, full swing, full swing, full swing. Um, where they're sitting, I don't know, like I don't full golf. No, I, no, I, I, I love, I would love the idea of learning how to play golf. I want to learn how to play golf, get into it. But I don't watch. I don't watch sports. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't, I don't really, I'm like the end. I, I feel bad because like I know nothing about sports. Like I, I don't watch any sports. So I'm like, I would be the worst guy to have on this podcast if you want to talk about sports. Just be like, oh, yeah, like, great. That's just NBA. Um, but there's a scene in Full Swing where there's like three or four top 10 guys sitting at a, at a, at, in a small like table and they're like joking around on and they're like having yeah, this and like this is like during a tournament or something i'm just like that does not exist in tennis yeah. like at all like that you never see that everyone's got their team they're like you know i'm not gonna call it posse because i have my own team too and you know whatever but they everyone has a little bubble and it's like high stress and it's you don't want to show any weakness you don't want it's like this constant mental game with everybody I mean, it's, especially when you're young when you get older you're like fuck it but um but seeing these guys sitting at the table i'm just like it's amazing i mean that's that's the, that's the life man yeah. like there's more how, Ram and, and i mean that. Yeah. how low stress is that like you're sitting with like your biggest competitors right but the reality is is and i don't not taking away anything we can go like super tough sport no problem no no doubt but like comparing the mental components of it, just that one scene alone is all I need to see, you know, in terms of, in my opinion, like how, how much more difficult mentally yeah. the, the sport of tennis is because you cannot be sitting and having chill time with like, you know, three or four of your yeah. top competitors. And I think their conversation was, one of them I think was saying that he was talking about taking the next week off because he had to, he, had to, he would have had to fly commercial to it instead of private. I think yeah, oh in that scene about, oh my God. which is, I mean, I, I'm the, probably the biggest golf fan in the world. Um, absolutely love it. Play all, try to play as much as I can. Uh, have mad, mad respect for every, every golfer out there. Cause I know how frustrated it is personally playing. I can't imagine being that good, but yeah, I think tennis, as he was alluding to tennis is, I think it's the most underrated physical, mental toll over the course of a year. You know, obviously, you football, you're just getting drilled by, you know, you're getting hit by dudes left and right, and your you know, body, you know, is going to be destroyed probably after a while. The head stuff, I mean, but over the course of a year, between the travel, the play, staying on, you have to stay on top of your stuff 350 days a year. I mean, and, oh, yeah, and if yeah, you're yeah. not, you're behind the eight ball. Oh, yeah. And then you're going into it. Like, I don't know how you even tried to play the last few years with that mental, because if you're going in playing a top guy, who's doing everything right at all times and, and you're trying to go in with even your 10%, 20% more consumed in the head or something and not clear going out there, you pretty much have no chance. Like these guys are just, yeah. so I think it's, I think it's so underrated and people don't understand. They just see the big tournaments on TV and it looks amazing. These crowds are there, but it's like, even just the travel alone throughout a year is, is psychotic. Like it's insane what, what, what we're doing and that's what, He's saying after this many years of us both flying, like it just, yeah, you, you get you burned out for sure. <laughs> so where do you, I mean, obviously you have a prime position in leadership and you're trying to change tennis right now. In five years, where, what big, what are the biggest improvements that you want on the tour and where do you see tennis going with the PTPA? 
Well, okay, so so I mean, big big picture, the whole reason why this started is well, one, you know, seeing, I would say, you know, players um, being you know taken advantage of. Let's say, I mean, you know, I just, I, I, it was just, it was very upsetting. And when I had back, I had back surgery and I had time on my hands, which is why this whole thing kind of, you know, kicked off. But the whole goal is, you know, I don't want. I think a sport that makes, you know, a, a multi-billion dollar industry, you know, if you have a hundred players making a living on the men's side and hundred, it's, it's about that, I'll take top hundred. And it's not even the top hundred things, I would say it's probably like 80, but then maybe you have like, you know, 15 or 20 doubles, doubles players that are making whatever, Let's say a hundred in the men's and hundred in the women's. You only have 200 players on the men's and women's side that are making a living out of the sport. It's, it's insane. So, the, I mean, it, there's something very wrong with that as soon as you see that right so um yeah the idea is to change that is this for for you know i don't know what the number would be but like so we have 400 500 600 players being able to like make it a, a living from the sport because um you know they obviously the money is there they're just it's just not being distributed the right way and and because it's it's monopoly so you know if you if you're if you have all of the power and you're just gonna pay what you decide you want to pay to keep things going and make sure the players are like happy enough and there's enough in it for them to keep playing and bringing this crazy product to to, to the masses and and making a ton of mon ton of money off of it. So I mean that's that's the, the first and then obviously and then it's just you know player services and like being able to you know a better pension plan, um, providing you know, insurance, helping with travel costs, like the whole, yeah, the whole like deal. Right? Is, there's so many yeah. little things that could be done. And I don't, I I know 1% of what he knows, maybe less than uh, about all of it. But yeah, I just feel like there's, over there's just so many, that's what people also don't understand is they, they also see, they think tennis players, and obviously if you're one of the top guys that you've made more money than you'll know what to do with down the road. But like for a lot of people that aren't in that position, they also don't understand the cost and everything that we do, we have to pay for and stuff out of our pocket. Obviously, some people have, you know, you know whether it's sponsors or people backing them or federations backing them, whatever it is. But like, I go to a tournament, you know, and people you know, like, oh, wow, great, great week and great result, great check maybe, and yeah, well, let me pay the taxes there, let me pay taxes at home, let me pay my coach, let me pay my physio, let me pay for their flights, my flights, my wife's flights. Uh, their hotel room, uh, hopefully break even all their expenses and like, yeah, you might be in the red after you thought you had a great week. Like, so it's not, you know, it, it, I'm fortunate blessed had, a, you know, had an amazing career, but I, yeah, I think there's so many things that, that could be done. It's better, like, it's just even travel costs. I mean, like the fact that, I don't know, yeah, there's so many things with all the money that, that's being made, there has to be things that can be done to, to help players out a little bit. So it's not as stressful because then you're going out there playing and you do, you don't want to, Say it's about money, but I mean, you're also trying to put the food on the table at the end of the day, and and and, and support yourself and family, whoever. So it's and you want to get paid, like you want to get earn, you know, the value that you're bringing to the table. I say it's not not necessarily individually, but collectively, right? As a player, obviously, the higher rank guys bring more value, and they get paid more. As they should, and that's how how it needs to always be. But but at the end of the day, yes, it's not about money, but it's also, I mean, it is, but. But it's about also fairness, right? I mean, it's right. about like when you're on the tour, when you're on the tour, and you know that you're getting completely, like, totally underpaid. Um, you know, there's there's a reason why there's been so much unrest in the player side of the last, you know, thirty years, and it comes in waves, it's like a cycle, right? So yeah. you have to, um, and then obviously they do everything they can to. When I say they, you know, the antagonists in this story, <laughs> uh, you know, try to do everything they can to 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 just mislead and you know misinformation and you know it's, it's i mean i yeah i can go on for hours about these yeah. but it's it's uh it was tough because i was on the council too so like i was seeing it firsthand and that was where i was like so disgusted honestly with um because you can't do anything there's nothing you can do literally like yeah. you're completely hopeless and they distract you with oh like should we play with let's or no let's guys this is such an important thing like take it back home think about it for a few weeks and then come back to us and it's like like, no, let's talk about the bigger picture stuff first and let's get to the little stuff later, you know? But it's like, you can't, you can't, you can't affect even the little things. That's how sad it is. It's like, they won't even give you a couple wins, you know? They, then they do, once there's a momentum, they're like, oh, wow, players are really like, 
pissed off about what's happening here. Let's give him a little couple wins and like quiet him down. Like, okay, like, yeah, we got $20 more for, for food, you know. The, you know all, of a sudden, all right, like, it's all good. Yeah. They care about us now. Like, oh. It's like, okay, now we're waiting another 10 years for the next wave of unhappy players, right? right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, um, that's cool though. And we don't have to stay on this too much longer, but it's got to be super important that Djokovic is like the other guy heading this up. And how did he, did you approach him? Did he approach you? Yeah, I mean, Novak doesn't get enough credit. Like, it really pisses me off. It pisses um, me off, and I'm because, not even involved in it. <laughs> no, no, it really, like, it's, it's one of the things that, like, really had me fired up. Um, obviously, he's one of my best friends on tour, and, and, uh, and he's such a good guy. Like, honestly, like, oh, and it's not about, you know, everybody can act like they're an angel when the cameras are rolling and you're, you know, and they can say the right things and this and that, but like, it's how you are when there's no cameras around and how you are with, you know, with just people around in general. I mean, he's, he's so generous and he's like, he helps, you know, I mean, I, I know, and I'm, I'm sure, he, I don't know if it's my place to be able to, to, to say this, but, you know, but you know, he helps juniors in, in, in Serbia, he's, you know, financing, he's help. He's like, he really cares. And it's because of this, of, of how, you know, I guess his upbringing and what he went through to get to where he is. And he has appreciation of, of the grind, and how hard it is and how skewed everything is like against the players on, in this sport. So I think he has, he's genuinely, I mean, I, I, it comes from a, a genuine place, you know, that he's trying to help these, these players in the sport and, and, so I, I think he just gets, he's been getting um, the last three, four years or, or even more, like he's been getting the, um, going through the rare and, and, and I think, you know, for whatever reason, there's just some weird media agenda to, to, to really go after him and, and uh, not looking at any of the, the amazing things that, that he's doing and picking on all these, you know, something, you know, and, and he makes mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, right? I mean, there's, I'm not not saying he's a, the perfect um, person, right? There's no, no question, but but there just hasn't been enough attention on, in my opinion, on on the good that that he does and the good and the good person that, that he is. And and I mean, I never and I'm until monologue here, but but I I you know I only really started seeing that when I got to know the person. Or when we got to know when we started this, we started hanging, we started you know spending a lot more time together, and and I just. You know, every year I just have more and more respect for 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 him, right? So, um, um, it's um, I think tennis. Um, I was going to say the players, but the sport. Um, very fortunate to have someone of his profile and you know the greatest player of all time to 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 be this passionate about about uh, about this topic. So I think, and I, you know, time there'll be a time soon where where it'll you know everyone will kind of realize that i think they're they're all well, very starting to yeah yeah i mean they're like, there's no like his hero's journey is like incredible the guy was had to be at the bomb shelter when he was young like by 8 p.m and then now he's the greatest tennis player in the world didn't come up with all the backing like it fires me up because i'm so I, I love the storytelling and the stories of the athletes and you have the guy that's the greatest of all time and you just feel like everybody would love this story, would love him if they knew it. Instead, you, he just gets painted as this villain, and you're like, this guy is, he's respectful in all these interviews, like, yeah. he's, he's fun, he's charismatic, and it, yeah, it pisses me off. I hate when those guys get just, like, disrespected by yeah. I think everyone, I think when I say everyone, I think, like, there'll be a time where, I, and I think it's already starting to happen slowly, but eventually, I think people are going to be like, you just get tired of hating on someone. Yeah. I think there's gonna be like a quick s switch where, where at one point it's like, oh, like, like let's, you know, this guy's awesome. Let's start cheering for him. You know what I mean? There's like nothing, there's no, there's really, yeah, anyway, I mean, a lot of people probably be hearing this back, oh no, <laughs> I'm talking about, no. but who are, who are the, of the, of the big three, like which, and uh, cause I've, I've been asked this a few times, but but 
who who is the toughest for you to play? Like, who do you think? Like, I'm not talking about who's the best. I'm not, you know, in my opinion, stats, you know, stats yeah. are there for a reason. But but who is the toughest to play for your game style? Like between those, because you played all three. Yeah, games. I think. Well, I actually only played Novak once, and I think. Um, Based on the one experience I had, uh, I played in Canada at, up at the up at the Master Series one summer, um, and just felt like I didn't play that bad. I think I lost like two and two. Um, yeah, it felt like I genuinely in this when I was playing good, good tennis, yeah. great tennis. It genuinely felt like I didn't really know what to do. Um, I I've had my best chances against Rafa in matches. Uh, I've had a break and. Third set before you know, a couple of summers ago at DC, China one year we played. I, I've uh, Labor Cup I lost 11-9 and third to to Rafa. Roger. I haven't really had like chances chances against, but I feel like I've been you know had I've been there to like yeah, yeah I, I you know um, so based on the one experience with Novak, I would I would say that felt that felt the most uncomfortable for me, you know, playing, um, just because you feel like there's not much you can do. Um, although he does, I feel like it gives you a little more time to, it's almost like a bait, like you think that you're gonna maybe control the point or you're doing something good, and all of a sudden you're, you're just not, you know, the flip of a switch. Um, I think Roger, Roger's, Roger's very suffocating, I think when you play, um, if you don't hit a ball, you know, great, you don't have much depth, he's just on you so fast. Um, and then I think Rafa, Ralph, I've had yeah, my, my best chances at um, of getting a win over over one of those guys. Um, for I mean, I guess just maybe played played great in those or uh, just matched it up maybe okay in, in that sense. But um, so yeah, I mean, probably no back on the one experience. Roger, not far behind. I'm interested just to get like both of you guys' perspective because. When you're listening to like football or basketball, you know it's easy. I think there's a lot of commentary and there's a lot of analysis. Like, okay, you know, NBA Finals, hey, we need to go at the point guard. We need to go Rondo a little more and pick him off. Or football, hey, we need to go target the linebacker more and try to get tight end linebacker. Which is, I don't think anyone in tennis has really talked about. Like, okay, tell me what's your game plan to get Roger. Uh, now he's on tour anymore, but you know, you both. I mean, you played. I uh, assume you played Roger, like. Okay, you're going into that match, and what's your game plan? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it, for it, Roger, was, Roger was crazy to play to for me because, like, serve speed, it was never, it was never overwhelming. But for me, for whatever reason, I just could not read a serve. I could never, I could never felt like I was, even if I got behind a break or something, I was like, oh, I like I, for sure, like I can get a break back in the set, or um, I felt like I was going to get in a lot of his service games with like a, with like a Rafa. I, you know he's gonna hit a lot, just a lot of sliders to the back end. You kind of know where it's going. You can get into his service games, and it takes a little less pressure off of your own serve. Whereas Roger, he just chips the return back. You're pretty neutral. You're having to play kind of the same point a lot over and over, and he's gonna do it better a lot of the time. And um, so, honestly, for me, it was as everyone in tennis knows. I was trying to look for forehands early at a point. Um, I would try to get ahead in, uh, in that point and, and honestly try to get in, probably get in that as much as I can and just, yeah, I think a lot of these guys on tour that think that, think that they're just going to stay the baseline and beat a bunch of these people or play their game, you, there's, there's a reason it hasn't worked for yeah. so many years and it's not going to work <laughs> that time around probably. So, yeah, I probably just, I honestly just try to play ultra aggressive, um, take my chances, uh, and if it could pay off, great. If not, probably was going to be a tough one anyways or so yeah I mean <clears throat> I mean all, all three of those guys are so different their game styles are so different um but like for me I came relatively close to beating Roger um the end of 2013 I played him three times um it was in semis of Basel actually I was at the break in the third and then I was and then he he actually played a pretty good game to break me back and then uh um, had break point like, late in third to serve for the match and he aced me and, but um, yeah against, against him it was like I, I feel like for me Novak was is the toughest of the three because it's also like a matchup game style I mean, one yeah I can argue he's he's also <coughs> excuse me Doc of it the, the great the best player let's say of the three of this in terms of the accomplishments but but when I played Roger I, it was always like a very clear 
game plan. Like the only way you're gonna have a chance of winning for me was like okay, like a lot of a lot of first serves at the backhand, right? Because he chips it, so you don't want to just just serve for the backhand because then you don't right. You gotta mix it. But like I was going like okay, going to match like eighty percent of my first serves, seventy five percent are gonna go big to the backhand, get the chip return, and then hit hit big and, and basically come in, right? If you get a short ball. Um, you don't want to serve much to this forehand because this forehand return is actually underrated. I don't think um, because you know the the backhand side. I mean, he's not hitting re winner returns, but his forehand return is like if he if he even gets like a racket, it's coming in, it's coming in fast, right? So so yeah, like and then cover the backhand cross court pass on big points. I mean, he can pass anywhere, but like these general like little things that you kind of learn about about some of these um, these guys, but. But again, and a, a Nadal, like same thing. I mean, Nadal, it's like okay, like you gotta, you gotta hit, you gotta hit big, and take it early if he starts, you know, dropping the ball short or whatever. But, but with Novak, it's like it's like one of the few guys. Even when I played Murray when he was number one, like super clear, you know, game plan. I mean, I was I was uh, um, basically coming into the net a lot and just trying to like be very unpredictable and and and, and play a lot in the middle. Because uh, he passes so well with with the angles, like if, you're, yeah. if he's running and he, he's got he has a target left, of, like he's he's just so good. one of the best at passing. So it was always like okay, like first of all, I like, threw the middle when it closed, and people, you know, it's like. But with but with Novak, it's like there it's just tough. It's just like okay, go and play lights out. Like literally, like that would just be like there's no like tactical, like one of the one of the few guys where there's. For me, that the, like there was so little to like discuss with the coach in terms of like what plan is because he's so complete. You know, it's like okay, like you know, maybe you, you maybe you slice short and try to like get him out of, out of that comfort zone, and, and but like you gotta come in, you gotta serve, like you gotta like just like go and hope you play like a like unreal match, which is the same for all the for, for those 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 three, but but um, yeah, they're just just. A, different all all obviously like the, the goats right so they're in yeah. what is like with doubles now how do you guys feel where, where is like I mean the Bryans are out of it now and they're not playing like do you feel like the doubles energy is there where people come and, and watch like do you think it's it's relevant or it's gonna get back into you know an energetic stage or is I guess what we we're talking earlier it will it will all gonna kind of change that yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I think. Listen, I, 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 uh, the re, I mean, the reality is, is that you know, for whatever reason, you can get into reasons, but but singles is is the biggest draw in tennis. So you know, I'd say by far, obviously, like it's not gonna offend anybody. That's just the reality. And so, as a result, all the big stars in the sport. Um, you know, let's say minus the Bryans, obviously when they were playing, they won so much, and and you know they were an American team, which helped as well. They were they were big stars, and but um, just I mean, all the big names in tennis are, are are singles players. So you know, unless they play doubles, it's, it's I mean it's it's I think it's it's a it's a tougher draw, right, for 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 people to buy tickets to go to go watch doubles and. I mean, I love doubles. It's it's amazing, and I have you know, uh, obviously we we've done well, and it's been great for me personally in my career. But but I mean, in, until that, there's some kind of change with you know getting singles players to play doubles. Um, you know, I, I, I see it kind of hard to to move. You know, if you get to a comparable state to singles, I mean, even even that, it's, it's just. Singles is just more energetic to just that's the draw in tennis currently, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's I think it's tough too because yeah, I think you do get the the fans, and I think Indian Wells is a great example of it. Obviously, that's just one tournament throughout the year, um, but I do think you get a lot of, of tennis fans that that tend to do they do like the fast pace of double as well. Quick, you know, there's net battles. Guys are coaching. It seems exciting. Guys are throwing out lobs and. There's sometimes some crazy points, and um, but I, I agree with obviously completely with Voshik in the sense that unless and again, Andy Wells is an example of that you get that's one of the tournaments you'll see some top singles guys get in the doubles draw, and those crowds are insane. I mean, like you, you get 
Yeah, people still love to watch it when yeah. they're there. Like when they're at the events, like they, it won't necessarily be the reason they, they buy a ticket to go and to, to go to a tournament, but like, you know, those are tennis fans. They love tennis. Yeah, they exactly. Watch doubles. That's kind of that's what I'm It's kind of the yeah. one off of like those are just people that are just tennis fanatics out there. But you go to yeah, you go to Umog in the summer or something, <laughs> and like, and you know, you're not. I mean, no disrespect, but you four guys you know, have a doubles court that, unless you follow tennis religiously, you probably maybe don't know the names. You know, while you know a lot of people know a lot of guys maybe in the top fifty, top forty, top thirty for sure. And, um, it's just yeah, it's just a, it, it is just a tougher product to sell. I mean, and, and yeah, I don't I don't I don't necessarily know how how that changes. Um, uh, but as long as you have the big names in and their and their singles is on and people are obviously going crazy for it, uh, it's, yeah. So it's going to be tough for for a long time to try to get them. Yeah, they don't show it on TV either. But I mean, Jack, you obviously you were playing doubles this week and, and mixed with Coco. I would assume that it's going to be pretty. Energetic out there with your last tournament, I mean, you know, was you know I've had, I've had a, you know a very uh, very grateful for you know the double success I've had over my career and and um, you know hopefully that adds to the to the crowd um, and and to the value of it. But obviously playing with Isner at his last tournament, um, gonna miss John. I know, uh, I know. He's damn. yeah, um, and then Coco, who's you know arguably the the you know. Face. Yeah, exactly. The biggest, yeah, crush, yeah. especially you know yeah. American, American women's tennis. I mean, she's she's it. So um, I don't know her too well, but she seems like they awesome, her and her family awesome like they, they just seem like awesome people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was I was I wasn't surprised with. I was I was more hoping we played last year. We pulled in. We played mixed and thought we were gonna you know do something cool there. Lost in the set lines, I think, or quarters, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, that was just getting. Obviously, didn't really know them other than cordial hellos, you know, passing some of the tournaments. But yeah, getting to you know, practicing with her, you know, on off days of warming up, and then yeah, meeting the family and kind of you know, people just super down to earth, which I was so happy with because I do feel I do feel like in tennis for sure when people either have some success or they you get wrapped up in kind of being very robotic and, and it can get stale at times. Like you alluded to, people are just with their teams and everyone's like, it, it's an independent sport, but like, that's where I think, you know, hopefully on here and, you know, hopefully and that's why, you know, some tournaments you see the personalities and the charisma from players. And I think it's super, super fun to see. Um, and so yeah, getting to know her and just in, in their family, was just, it was awesome just to see that it wasn't, I didn't know if it was gonna be like a, just an ultra serious, like obviously the success she's had. And, the position she's in, but she was super down to earth, had a way of laughing, having a great time out there, and hoping to do that this week and, and you know, hopefully make a good run. It'd be sweet. Yeah, how'd y'all get plugged in? Did you mess here? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, obviously, Wimbledon last year, we, we played well, and um, I, I didn't have her, I, I don't even know how we coordinated like practice and stuff. I think through her coach, Diego Moyano, at the time, who I've known for a long time through USTA, so yeah, I asked him for uh, her number and um, yeah, and asked if she, you know, if she wanted to play my last tournament, and uh, she, yeah, it's cool. She actually said it'd be, you know, she'd be honored to play in in, in, in my last one, which, which is great. So, that was good. Maybe Jimmy Butler will show up. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Buckets. Dude, I'm stoked to teach you pickle today. Sorry, to try we're, back, we're back. We're back. We back. Boss is playing pickleball in about a few hours. That's Dude, he's going to ask you. Hands are going to be money. Yeah, hands are hands are never, no problem with the hands. What I can see happening, what I can see, what, what I can see happening is Bossy plays today, and he goes, "I'm fucking quitting tennis." I'm quitting tennis, hundred percent. And what is what's the rivalry between? I don't understand right now because MLP and PPA. Yeah, tell me more about that. How can I how can I monitor? So how are we gonna get how are we gonna get Bossy and pickleball today? Just, just let me know when you want to switch over, and I'll get you taken care of. What are you, Jack? Are you MLP or PPA? PPA life. Come on now. They threw in the lid. Wait, wait. Right? So what's the difference between the two? What is it? What was the other one? MLP PPA. and PPA. Yeah. What's the difference? What's going on? Here? Uh, so I want to learn more because I'm right. Oh, let's, let's, you guys got another I'm hour. hour. <laughs> um, so PPA was kind of the original pickleball. It's okay. kind of the okay. ATP tour in a sense, where Got the it. normal tournaments, individual tournaments, singles, doubles, mixed. WPA, what is it? MLP. 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 But basically MLP. off 
Offense, <laughs> offense, <laughs> offense, <laughs> offense, <laughs> offense, <laughs> offense, 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 what was I saying? So, so PPA, 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 PPA so, well, and I should well, no, play tennis. Well, 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 yeah, so PPA, just, PPA is the individual PPA. side of it, and then this new league, uh, MLP, that you see all these celebrities, athletes, massive names investing in these franchises. Um, I guess you don't watch sports, so normally it's on ESPN. No, I know. So, no, yeah, I watch some sports. Um, yeah. So, yeah, MLP is, is like, there's like 24, 24 franchises. I think there's 24 franchises. A lot of big names investing in it. It's more of the it's the team uh, aspect. You get drafted uh, by a franchise and you play for them. Um, and uh, they were kind of trying to go head to head because MLP came in and okay. PPA. Uh, they're you know now they have tournaments. You know same times, different times. People are playing both. They were supposed to merge a few weeks ago. Friday morning last week blew up. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely blew up and then it was pretty much a full send uh, rat race from both leagues uh, get all the players a lot of a lot of billionaires on both sides that now you know don't not See, tennis like needs some of this like competition and, uh, and yeah, yeah. You know, literally like, a race to sign every player that you could ever think of a pickleball and um, you basically kind of have to choose a side if you maybe you like the team format better maybe like this but then both sides also said like MLP was now going to have a few individual tournaments. PPA was now going to incorporate a few. They're going to start their own uh, team league called Vibe, the the Vibe League, and uh, so yeah, it's 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 kind of total chaos right now in the, in the with football world. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been keeping up with uh, Sam Queries in my videos. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, Sam signed Sam PPA. A full, so a full like historical breakdown of uh, yesterday posted a video. Yeah, no, it's uh. It's been crazy, yeah. but um, yeah, it's been it's also been awesome. So uh, yeah, I'll be on the I'll be on the PPA side of things starting. Uh, so apart from me, apart from me, uh, who would be the next best pickleball player in the tennis world right now if they quit tennis? Um, Good question. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of that. You've maybe either that you. I mean, listen, okay, I can whatever. Like that you've let's say seen player or a little of whatever, or you, who you think would just transition well, like. Yeah, I think he'd probably be top <laughs> top dog. Um, I know Stevie J's played uh, a oh, little bit. Stevie. He's played a little bit before. Obviously, he has the slice backhand down to a to a, to a T in tennis, and you know, dinking that's pretty much almost the same motion, just a little obviously smaller court and everything. But uh, and he's got pretty, he's got great, you know, he's got good. How's hands. John? How's John? I know he played. John is deceivingly good. Like he's, I mean, he's pretty good. He obviously is he too tall? For he doesn't play that much. I know it's like a good thing to have. It's a give arms, and take, yeah. It's a but give like, and take. also, I mean, you gotta like kind of get low, right? Yeah, like, I think. I'm not. I mean, I'm, I don't know. John, John, I would. I've, I've said it, and, and we did that event in Vegas last end of last year with with PPA and, and some of the top pros that play. And he's like, if you're gonna play a day, and he's gonna play, you know, six or seven games or something. He is one of the best players out there for like one game. He's just like lights out, and it's insane. And then he. I think he's yeah maybe gets a little too low for him and, and everything yeah. after that but yeah I don't know I don't, tennis wise obviously obviously yourself I think if you put some time into it would be super nasty I think Stevie um, could be good with already playing some um, I don't know I mean it's it's also it's also just different I mean it's gonna be interesting to see who switches. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, he's, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah. One podcast, I'm almost like uh, I got one foot out the door. And you haven't even played yet. I haven't so played yet. If you play today, I can see. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call your agent. <laughs> hey, there's no yeah. players association. Though. I'll I'll you got to start a new one. We can change that. I was just say, <laughs> got the, we got the guy. <laughs> I know a guy. We can start the. P- I know a guy. P A. The P P P A. P P P P P A. Yeah, we can make Wait, so t shirts. But there. Jack, what you said the MLP one is considered like the ATP and the PPA. No, P- PPA is, is like the the PPA is like the ATP. We got a lot of Damn, stuff going on here. That's tough um, because Jack because is going to want to go against the grain. I'm no, I'm saying as a as a uh, just as like a as a as like the foundation of the sport because it's just it's like your normal tournaments throughout the year. 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I see. Like, yeah, you just, like, there's a schedule, and it's like individual tournaments like this. You go play, they have different tiers of tournaments from their, their slams, you know, whatever they're, you know, they're called, and they're different tiers of events. Um, and MLP would be, I'm not even sure what, maybe Davis Cup ish, but you're not drafted. Maybe, maybe World Team Tennis to a degree, which, you know, not still around, so. Yeah. Um, maybe MLP won't be around soon. Yeah. P- PPA Live. Fire hey, question. Like, fire. Come on. Hit the question. Fire question. Fire. Trevor, fire question. Go. Get him on the hey, let's hear this Necker Island story. I don't know Necker what Island story? Yeah, Which so one? Bossing, Which one? Bossing yes. has <laughs> the best title in tennis. It's called uh, Necker Cup Tournament Director, where you uh, true, go and true. play tennis at Sir Richard Branson's Island. And Vosick plays tennis, but I think uh, that's your vacation for the week, right? It's the vacation. It's my vacation, actually. Jack's gone too. Yeah, only drink water the whole week. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's it's. Uh, it's a wild last year was lost. Last year was uh, was a bit wild. We made the. It's it's fun, right? It's it's a charity pro am event. No one really takes it seriously unless Jack comes. And then <laughs> Jack, <laughs> yes. you want it? I just, I, Are you a Necker Cup champion? I'm a Necker Cup champion. Oh, I have yeah. a trophy in my house. I'm a three-time champ, so I shouldn't be. I yeah. I I. Talk about taking it serious. <laughs> I thought it was two. It's good. It's, it's got to go the two. No, it am I three-time or two-time? He's a tournament director. Though. Wait, maybe I'm a two-time. Come on now. Tournament, tournament director that wins the tournament. Like, okay, I was yeah. getting pressure from my I, partner to win. I was so trying I was not like, to win. I was like, this would be bad. So I had 18 shots before the match, thinking that would that would ensure a loss. Like it'd be like a guaranteed loss. I played lights out and I was like, it's like tweeners and like doing all this shit. And uh, no, but literally 10 minutes before the final, cause it's my vacation guys. So like, don't, you know, it's my vacation. So I was drinking a bit. I try not to drink very much, whatever. Uh, I don't. Um, and yeah, I was playing against Mike, Brian in the final. But we had our, our ams and it's, it's, it's really fun. It's not, you know, it's not, not like a serious thing, but but uh, I was in the hot tub like five <laughs> minutes before before the final, like just fired up and like and shots and like even my even the, the the M that we were playing against was like feeding me shots. He's like yeah yeah have more have more, like you know thinking that, that I was gonna help him. Um, and then the reverse happened. I just played like uh, I was just like so loose and I was just so happy out there and and we ended up winning. Got the title. Am I two time or three time champ? This is important. I think it's we'll just go with three. No one's gonna. Apparently, I'm two. Oh, shots of blood. We might need to make my way back down and tie that record there. Pretty, Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm a three-time champ. I'm a three-time champ up here. What's your best Necker Cup story? Best Necker Cup Both story. Both you guys. And I know Jack's got a few good ones too. Okay, Jack, go first because I. Well, just, ours, just, mine was cool because it was actually, um, as uh, Trevor would know, is actually Necker Cup was supposed to be the uh, location for my proposal. Uh, an engagement oh. originally. Yeah, what happened to that? Uh, I was all fired up. Though. Trevor had it so hooked up. We had the the dinner table on the beach with the perfect setting. Uh, it was gonna be it was gonna be sick. I had uh, flights and stuff for uh, my wife is Laura. Have her family come down and, and be there with, be there with us for a night or two. And then um, uh, the plane got leaked um, How? by by my side of the family. Mm-hmm. No, unfortunately. Well, come on, guys. Well, it was actually. And it, was, ruining it was a message. Moment. It was a message from my side of the family to Laura's sister, Courtney. And no. but it was it was it was it was in a longer message, oh. and Courtney was trying to show Laura something not obviously related to that, but it was in there. So when she was reading it, it was ninety percent about something else that she needed to talk to her oh, about no. or show her. This is Courtney's and it, Yeah, and it happened to be in there, and uh, so Laura. So, so, so Laura literally just like basically read the plan at some point in this long message and then I was like standing and I could see her face pretty much go like ghost almost and I was like I don't know, someone die or what like what, what's happened here and um and she I think she is she honestly it was like emotional because it it was a, it was a sick plan uh it was all it was all locked in and ready to go and um so you like you like and this was oh it was like a proposal it was like basically be like that was a proposal like she it went from like being this amazing proposal yeah. like, yeah. to like, so like, hey, you yeah, know what's coming? You're like, you're like, oh, so, oh, Jack, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go marry you. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, say yes, oh. please. And uh, so I, I, yeah, and this was, this was, 
about seven to ten days before Necker. Like this was so this was a lot of time. Then? This was a lot of time in the making. I knew I was coming here to New York to get um, some injections in my back um, at the time, and uh, so we knew we were coming here. We both we both liked the city, and um, so I then I then got like super sad about it and almost played it had to play it up to be like ultra sad like I had so I put so much time into this like I don't know how I was like I know now I'm sorry you thought you know maybe you thought oh you know this is going to happen in December now kind of in our off season time and I was like this is going to take I'm going to need a few months to like plan something else meanwhile I was trying to plan something then just for New York I was getting injections Um, her birthday was around then so and then we were going to Necker right after so I just put together a plan for here had a family fly up here um, got a photographer and a videographer for like playing a day in Central Park with horse and carriage ride and it's such romantic and uh, ended up proposing there and then we flew to Necker the next day and wow. uh, so we basically got to celebrate in Necker um, our engagement and had a absolute blast um, I will never drink Cafe Patron again after that trip <laughs> that's for sure uh, I don't think any human should consume as much as we were having <laughs> oh my gosh uh, but it was a blast um, took the title with uh, buddy Mike Mike Kozlowski down there and, um, I, must, I don't think I was playing that year was I? Yeah. he wanted to win badly <laughs> I will say he, he wanted a W um, everyone low key wants to win because it's like I mean on the the, the amp side on the amp side yeah, yeah, sure yeah. Yeah. Or not even sick, not like, even not even, even low, not even low key like they like they, so definitely, he goes, they definitely yeah, want to win yeah. and I think it's like yeah like he also has like a he also has like a Hawker 800 plane or something. He was like, it wasn't basically, but he's like, yo, like we get this W, like I, you can hop on the plane tomorrow and go back up to, say I'll get you to Tampa where he lives, and then like just you know you fly up to Charlotte from there. And I was like, all right, game on. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to connect six times out of this island to go to fly home. So let's go get a W. Did he hold up his end of the deal? Yeah, hopped on the plane the next morning. Um, Felt so good from all the water and hydration we had that I was pretty sick actually on the plane. Uh, made it fairly miserable. Um, plane was unbelievable. The, the the trip was nice, but I wasn't feeling all that great um, for sure. So um, yeah, as a country music fan, it's tough to have Florida George Line right there on the beach with like seventy five people only, like a private concert, and I was just and we just won, and I was feeling good, to say the least. It's, it's a, that's an, yeah, it's an amazing. Amazing place, man. Yeah. You're good. Keep going. You 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 got your story. Uh, Trevor, do I have a story? Can't think of one. I mean, I I was thinking of them. They're all uh, they're all all R rated. I can't. <laughs> I didn't agree. Like there's funny. I don't even know. But do you? Oh do you gosh. Ever, do you ever? That's special. Hey, uh, it's thank hey, you uh, for joining us. Hey, uh, <laughs> we appreciate it. Top three most fun dudes to party with on tour. Uh, top three most fun dudes to party with on tour. Um, so I think you guys obviously. Surprisingly, um, huh. that's my alarm. It's a wake up right now. <laughs> Over and over. I would have missed. I would have missed this fuck. Damn. <laughs> Where was my head at last night? Uh, uh, I would say, um, not like I partied that much, to be honest. Um, maybe, maybe like a, maybe, maybe he, there was a couple of years there where I was, where I, I definitely did have some fun, but, um, it would have just been with Jack. Like, I don't really know if I party with other I hear it's, players. It's not, it makes you sound like bad influence or something. No, 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 it's not the only time I party with no, this no, guy. No, 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 no. And it's, and, but, and it's not because you're that fun to party with. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's because you're the only one I party with. <laughs> <laughs> one of no. one. But, one of one still makes you the top, right? right. <laughs> no, no, no. To, to be, to be. No, <laughs> to be fair, like I, you don't, you don't really. I think some of the American guys, like from what I hear, I mean, obviously you're an American guy, so you can tell me. But like, um, they will party together. I mean, you know. Um, but for the most part, I don't think like tennis players really go out together. You know, yeah. it's like you're. And this is back to the whole competition thing, being on tour, like. Like yeah, you're you you're friendly with a lot of the guys, but they're not like there's very few that are like real like friends, friends. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like um, to be just like a couple. Uh, right. I would say Christian Harrison. So I almost shout out to Christian. 
See he, Harry. He, he's the man, and uh, yeah, he would have been the guy that I guess along with Jack, they're basically the only two that I that were players that I would have like gone out with. Yeah. Um, I want to hear like when you guys were playing. I'm not gonna say when you guys were playing. Was it 2014? Is when you guys won? Yeah. So you're like, okay, let's let's play. Let's see what happens first round. You guys just start drinking, and then like, what is that? Okay. It was vacation. It sounded like the general. It was vacation. Vacation. It's vacation. Like you're winning, and then you're like quarterfinals. Like, oh shit, maybe we should take it seriously. Like, it also, it wasn't that way. It wasn't right. that, it crazy wasn't that crazy. at all. <laughs> by, the, by the way, like I know. thought it was crazy. It was like the first time I ever went out. I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, think we, I was like 24 years old. I'm like, damn, like. But you guys, uh, you guys win the match, and then crazy. you go party, and then you practice the next day, and then you. Just, but like we weren't like we weren't like going out. Yeah, like, looks like the we were, club. Yeah, we were going to like a club like the night before we played or anything. No, no, we no, no, like no. we would if we played a match. There was days off in between. Yeah, because doubles, so. yeah, doubles, especially when you're out as early as we were in singles, like there, you have a, I mean, over two weeks span, there's a lot of days off for doubles, so um, you don't necessarily know the schedule until you know last minute. So yeah, if we played a match and, and we got a win and we knew we had a day or two, sometimes you have two days off. Um, yeah, we would go to the city yeah. and have you know have dinner and have some drinks and um, we go to a bar, you know, go to a bar or something. Yeah, you know, both like music, like listen to music and yeah, and yeah. Uh, have fun. But yeah, it wasn't like fourteen nights in a row. We lost singles. That we were just like, no, we did three nights. We, we did three nights. Yeah. It was it was it was fun. We 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 win our match. That we'd go out. Yeah, you know, out like. Like he says, it's not like we're up till eight in the morning, <laughs> five a.m. knocks, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then and, uh, and then the next day we would just, I mean, we'd just go and hit for like thirty minutes, and then we mm-hmm. and then then we'd play the match the following day, and then we'd go out again, and then uh, but it was because it was like it was our it yeah. was our vacation, yeah, 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 it, was, it, was, it was like okay, well either we're you know not going to have a vacation because tennis schedule is nuts, right? We were also playing Wimbledon doubles, so it was like, we, we want to do well. And yeah. I mean, if we had lost first round, we would have actually gone on a real vacation, right? Like yeah. I would have anyway, I would have gone somewhere for four days, three, three, four nights and like on a beach somewhere and like actually had a vacation. So we had to, you know, replace it a little bit with. And that stretch through Wimbledon is, is pretty grueling. Like if you're, yeah. Yeah. Like you're a stretch from, I mean, you're all the way from the beginning of clay season through Wimbledon with yeah. virtually no break. So you're like, it's like yeah. two and a half months in Europe. Yeah. Right? Like, that, yeah. Like that, yeah. Two that months point, in Europe, at least two months. Not many people can say that their vacation was uh, Wimbledon championship. <laughs> That's pretty sick. First, vacation. yeah, the first week. But yeah. what is, I think, uh, it was both of you guys first time playing center court. What was kind of like, you know, just the, the process walking out there, obviously playing the greatest double team of all time. And then, you know, Four hours later, Jack sitting an inside out forehand. Inside in. Inside in. Inside in. Inside in. Yeah. Sorry. There, was, and there was a lot of work up to that point, all right, bud? Come on, give me some credit here. I didn't just like wake up at Wimbledon final match point and Jack hits an inside and we're going to win it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, damn. This, this, guy's, shoe, like, this guy's returns and shoelace ball. Probably has 20 reasons too. Insanity. If you haven't. I don't, hopefully they have it. I was I was on fire. Yeah, a condensed we were, sorry, highlight reel. We were both on fire. <laughs> yeah, but like Who was we were playing it? some ball. We were playing yeah. well. For a couple we complement each other. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, without without play from him, without play from me, obviously it's not possible. Like every doubles team, but yeah, I felt like we were really good at if if one of us was maybe going through a. Like I definitely had spans where I admit it wasn't returning that well, getting us in many points, missing first serves. What was the second round? The second round was where we were really where we were in trouble. Yeah. Remember like, the five against Bopan and yeah, we were, yeah. five sets? That was the closest we came, I guess, to losing. I mean the, that was the ultimate ham and egg. We were we were picking each other up. Because also Wimbledon doubles until this year was three out of five. So it's like you're out there for a while with you know, with your with your guy and it's uh you're not gonna play lights out for, you know, usually that every you know every minute of, of that match so yeah we definitely had yeah, our second round against Bofana it was like do we have to come back the next day did it get dark yeah I don't remember but like I know Kreshi mm-hmm. he like blew his back or something like they were like yeah. no no straight up like because uh, and like he was struggling he was struggling because he, he I don't know what happened do you remember that I think it was over I think that happened overnight then because I think we played it got dark I mean he didn't like blow like he was he had a <laughs> stiff back and yeah. he like couldn't really like he got his back blown out he couldn't really like <laughs> move 
you know, all that well. And, and but it's, you know, you're playing, they're still serving big and, and some, it's grass, yeah. grass courts. Yeah. And was, there, there was a there was a time there. Uh, I mean, a time, there was that was a tricky match. We we I remember I say like break points in the fifth. Yeah. Um, someone's calling me. Honestly, so we, we can roll with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're no no. We'll, this this will be the oh never mind. Not picking that. Put another speaker. No no no. Not picking that up. Well, What's her name? No, it's <laughs> it's his numbers. No, it's just stupid shit all the time. <laughs> calling me for stupid shit. That's integrity unit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anti-doping is probably uh, knocking on my door right now. Do you know they came? Okay, this is fucked up. All right, I'm really <laughs> pissed off about this. Okay, I like, no, 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 <laughs> really pissed off. Okay, so you know how you give your he doesn't get heated off in no, here, so he must no. like this is this is big deal. This is a big deal. I'm really upset. So you know, so for those that don't know, it's like every throughout the, throughout the year. They need to know where you are every day of the year, and you have to give a one-hour time slot where they can come and test you. Okay, so every day of the year. Every day of the wow. year. Okay, so really? I'm an address with a one-hour time slot. Yeah. So they know right now that I'm in the hotel, I'm whatever, not too far from here. And if you're ranked well enough, by the way, I've had to do that in a while. And I, uh, well, right, I'm not gonna have to do it next year because <laughs> I'm gonna, like dropping like a rock right now. But um, so I have a 9 a.m. time slot this week coming into the US Open, 9 a.m. Usually it's like 6 a.m. so you know you're there. Yeah, no, 9 a.m. because I'm like, okay, hey, I'm gonna get some sleep. I'm gonna sleep in until, you know, I'm like, I'm not gonna, sleep is super important, whatever. Okay, 9 a.m. and if I miss it, I'm like, oh shit, there's a missed test and then if you get three, you're, you're fucked. But I said, I'll talk about that. So anyway, I have one missed test right now. So I don't wanna get a second. Um, so anyway, so you have, but apparently, I don't know if you know this, you probably do. Probably but, not. But if they, they, they're allowed to just show up at any time of the day, even the oh, time it's not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. true. So like, I could be whatever. I mean, I don't know. I could, they, so they can show up, and if I'm if I'm there, if they physically yeah. see me or like you know or any anywhere or whatever point they come and test me, like I have to drop everything I'm doing and 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 you know, which is like okay. I think I think it's happened to me like one time in the, in in the last ten years where that where that's happened. So anyway, why this is relevant is because two days before my first match. Actually, no, sorry, the day, the day before my first match here at the Open, okay? I have a 9 a.m. time slot, and I didn't get enough sleep kind of leading to the Open knock because of just like training a lot, and early, like waking up early in the morning, training early, right? So like, and I'm finally, so not the day before my match, but the night before, prior to that, whatever, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get some good sleep, like finally, I'm gonna sleep in, whatever. They show up at 6.15 in the morning, literally 6.15 in the morning, on, knocking on my door, well, actually, reception called me. So, well, Rece yeah, reception yeah, called me, all and all I'm all like, all first all thing all that comes to my mind is like, oh my god, it's an emergency. Is my parents calling from you know whatever? I don't know. So I like, I pick up, I pick up the phone, and I'm like, oh, that's doping here for you. I'm like, are you kidding me? And if I was, it doesn't answer that phone call, he's fine. It's lost yeah, not until 9 a.m. Exactly. So like, if I if I had oh, known, man. I would have been like, I'm not answering that. Like, I'm gonna get yeah. sleep, right? Like, and then you don't get a missed test. There's no problem because it's not the time slot that you gave. So anyway, I I was like so pissed off. I've never I've never been up like upset with like a doping control officer in the past. That even though it's not his fault, I was like not. I was like basically pissed, really pissed. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. I'm like, it's 6:15 in the morning. I'm playing the U.S. Open tomorrow, and I'm trying to get some sleep. Yeah. So what happened? So what happened was he came in and then I fucking had to do the test. <laughs> no, and then I tried to sleep and I couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. I played a three and a half hour match the next day and fucking the however hot it is yeah. in Fahrenheit, I'm Canadian. And yeah. You got the win. So I got the win. Dude, side, <laughs> got the win. side note here, have you ever had to have you ever had to poo in front of a doper? That's really weird. No, that's uh, probably weird. I'm yeah. saying, you guys like, really from a doper? Yeah, like they come, they, if they, like the one time in the morning slot, like at, at home, like I woke up, had my coffee. I've never heard this before. Yeah, I woke up, like had my coffee. Oh, uh, the coffee is a big mistake. That's, well, I, coffee and I was enjoying my morning. <laughs> I was enjoying my morning uh, not knowing, and it was like, there's, there's, well, there's nothing. What do you do at this point? Like, Speaking of coffee, I asked for a gallon of coffee, <laughs> and I got, I get this. All right. Wait, so what that happened? Yeah. yeah, it was tough. It was so like, you just so you just pooped? You just into squeezed, what? You squeezed, squeezed, you squeezed, <laughs> did, did squat, you take a sample? You, like, no, you, squat, you squat and go, and then obviously, as we all know, you, 
you know, that's really awkward. One, sure one and two happen while you're doing that, so then you just got you just got to throw the what? cup down there and just wait. Yourself. Why wouldn't you just go one first? Why would you have to like? No, go it, 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 it is. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So what happens? Like, say you're on, you're, you're at Necker <laughs> Island, and they call you. Like, you're in the BBIs for two weeks. Well, they could technically if show up uninvited if they want to guests on Necker yeah, Island yeah. Yeah. because they want to test you. That's what they should do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, they were smart. I had a lady come get a vacation out of it. Dude, they, yeah, I, that happened once too, the showing up outside. Usually it's in the time frame that you give, but it happened once at the house too, where it was just like, and it was the same if I just don't answer the door because I didn't, I thought it was anybody but doping because it was nowhere near the time frame. I was usually like six to seven or seven, eight in the morning. And then it was like afternoon, she was literally like, oh, I was getting a, I think there's like a US, must be like a track or somebody that lives in, in Charlotte. She's like, oh, I was uh, over here doing, you know, another athlete, so I just thought I'd stop by. Uh, and I was like, I I was like, what do you put us at? And I actually opened the door, like, and just, yeah, I, then, then it's just like Dang super you annoying. You're sitting in the kitchen, like, like you don't watch Sports Center, that's what I'm watching. We can hit, hang out for two hours, not the pee. I don't know when I'm at, like, so I frustrated. Take the dump is, that might not have been the, the doping agency. <laughs> it might, okay. you, might, you might need to check on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was tough scenes. I did, yeah. yeah. So these doping people just hang out. Everywhere. It's so awkward, like, dude, you're just well, sitting there, like, I've had mornings too where like, I, I you know, we wake up, you have to go to the bathroom in the night, my, my time is at like 6, I've woken up literally at like 5.50 and like gone to the bathroom, just not, you know, out of it, and then they knock on your door 10 minutes later, you just like emptied the whole night. You do six time slots. I used to do like, I used to do early. Wow. Just to, and you can't just pound water because it's too diluted. Well, yeah. It's it's Probably. Well, yeah, yeah, like that one. No, you can't put water in the thing. So. No, but like if you drink it, you drink. <laughs> it's, like, it's too diluted. That's just water, right? You can't put it in the cup. If you, drink, if you drink like a gallon of water and then. Right, if it comes out too clear, you have to Where's get my it? gallon yeah. of coffee, by the way? I'm still waiting for that. Uh, I can use a coffee right now. That is. Uh, I'm enjoying this. That's yeah, how fun it is. Enjoying this. How fun is it? You get like so you Uber Eats, some coffee, and some food. Oh my just god. Keep talking. I just want extra sure. with hot sauce so bad. It has to be Michelin star and it's on But no guitars, by the way. We should have brought the guitar. What? That was sure. dumb. No guitar. I mean, you you know what? I've been bo- I've been so busy. You know, I'm kind of a very busy, very busy guy. But uh, I've been so busy. <laughs> I've been so busy the last couple of years that I've hardly played. It's kind of sad. I used to play every day. I used to travel with this car. You traveled the guitar. We were playing in yeah. uh, Miami one year. We were hanging out. And he was trying to teach me. I'm a hundred songs. It was like help. It was uh, oh. he was like helping a. I don't even know what. I'm not gonna say, but yeah, I was. I was. I was not good at trying to learn a guitar, and he was trying to be patient enough to help me. And I was like, let's just let's just go out. <laughs> what do we know with these songs? A hundred of them. I have. Well, I have a hundred songs. I probably have like. I I was so into it like. When I learned how to actually write a song, my brother like explained music theory. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend like I understand music theory. I'm not, but like when he explained the idea, the concept behind it, and how you can write, how to write a song, that's all I did. I stopped actually learning how to become a better guitarist, which I kind of regret. But so I'm like a strummer, like a campfire yeah. strummer type of guy, Wonderwall and whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and then I started writing songs, and, and then I, I was writing a song. Every two days I had a new song for like a while. And what kind of song? Like? I think he gets all the females. He just throw, throws it all on the yeah. song. Oh, that thing that's over the, there? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. yeah. Oh. oh. What? Yeah, um, <laughs> then, yeah, then it's game over. So who are the, uh, the best Canadian musicians, artists? Top three, Nickelback's number one, obviously. Beaver. Top oh, three. Yeah, I mean. Um, you know, what, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Arcade Fire. Uh, I, I, they, their first albums were, were. I mean, obviously, I would, you'd say they're, you know, yeah, like Brian Adams, right? Yeah. You want Brian Adams? Will you ever? Drake. 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 I mean, have you got a popular or you met any of them? Um, no, but funny story. Uh, well, not actually funny story. I, but <laughs> it's not. It could have been a funny story. It ended up being. It ended up being no story. Uh, and. Apparently, Arcade Fire, and they'll probably deny this, but this is what my agent told me. Is. <laughs> no, they're gonna see this and be like, "That's not oh, true." Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, Ar- Ar- Arcade Fire, they were in uh, Australia um, during the Aussie Open when I had my breakthrough. I was top top thirty, even whatever, and I had a really good uh, six month period going to the Aussie Open where where I actually hurt my back, and the I was spo- either I forget what it was. I think they asked. 
they wanted, they, or they asked, somehow my agent said like, oh, they wanted to like hang out or meet, I think they're tennis fans or whatever, like backstage of their concert at some point, and, and which would have been really cool because um, I was a huge fan at the time and obviously still am, but but then I, I uh, hurt my back. That was the beginning of the, all my back issues actually. And then I, I flew out of Australia the day before, which I, which I regret now. I'm yeah. like, oh, I should just stay a day and like deal with this back problem, kick, kick the can down the road a bit, right. uh, <laughs> at least by 24 hours. But, but no, I was like, I went home and tried to resolve right away. And so that could have been a cool story. Yeah. Um, you you going to get in the, uh, in the studio with Dennis? You see, I see he makes he make some rap songs. With Dennis. Um, he'll probably deny this too. Dennis, you better not deny this. I'll be so pissed if you do. But he, it might not be totally true, but he started rapping, I think, because we st we were hanging out with Davis Cup and I was playing guitar and he would like, and he started writing some lyrics. I was showing him some songs that I had and he like, he got, he was like, oh, this is, he's like, oh, that's cool. And then he just like started writing some lyrics and so I, I feel like, uh, Oh, you just I'm partly, talent, I'm, partly I'm partly responsible for the for the rap at Ian Wells uh, <laughs> haunted the You wrote it. <laughs> You're the ghost writer. You're like, what's the VI Beaver? What's his age or the guy? Scooter Brown. Yeah, like, so like Scooter that's Brown. A, hey that hey, honestly, I gotta give him some props because that took a lot of balls. Dude. It took a, a lot of balls. Man. And he loves like, it, he does it. All no, to do it there with no like no music and just taking the mic and like start rapping on the court after you just played a two hour match or whatever like I'm like damn like he's got some balls yeah, you know awesome. and like say what you want but um oh man i'm a listener dude, I'm well, one of the monthly we should, get you, we, should, we should be on tour you and dennis should go on tour on tour yeah on music tour music tour <laughs> oh boy like, I, think I'll, I think i'll pick a ball <laughs> <laughs> i think i'll do better there <laughs> well, cool I think uh, we're... Are we going to wrap? Should we get some food? Yeah, some food. Let's do it. Food and coffee. You want to sign us off, Smashing Rackets? Yeah, sign us off. Yeah, Lassie, yeah. Lassie, how, was, how was your time with All right, guys, this is Smashing Rackets. It's Vashik Possible. So first guest of all time. Number one, yes, the best guest. <laughs> kind of the like and subscribe. The best episode that you will ever have was right now. Potentially. Like, subscribe. There you go. Refresh be sure to watch the next episode where I will probably be a guest again because this is so awesome. Thanks. Oh, Jack Sock here. We got JP, we got Clark. Uh, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Smash the like, like, smash the subscribe. Hey, hey. Yeah, awesome. Big yeah, week for Jack. Let's get, uh, let's get some Jack, fun. congrats. For Jack. Also, also, huge congrats, man. On Thank amazing you. career, seriously. I appreciate that. Um, unbelievable. You are retiring pretty young, and you did a lot, man. Accomplished a lot. Top 10 singles, multiple grass slams, and Olympic gold medal. Congrats, man. Thank you. Pretty I appreciate awesome. that, yeah. yeah. So. Our Wimbledon was uh, one of the greatest uh, in that in some of those achievements, so it was sick. Yeah, so, appreciate it. All right, we'll put Thanks, the link in the, in the description to your sugar. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Do some cells. <laughs> yes. Anything is Boss Basil, check out my website. Anything is <laughs>